Hey everybody, welcome back to my shop. My name is Tom. In today's video, I'm going to unbox, test, and review this 3D printer. It is the Creality LD002R. How well does it perform? How well is it built? How easy is it to operate? Is it worth the price? I will try to answer all these questions and many more today right here on Southpaw Workshop. Big thanks to Banggood for providing this printer for evaluation. If you decide that this printer is right for you, be sure to click in the link in the description below for exclusive pricing and discounts on this printer and much, much more. Now, on to the review. Since this is a resin printer, it arrives mostly assembled, packed neatly in a sturdy box. Most of the accessories are packed in foam on top of the printer, but the vat and build plate are located inside the printer, also tightly packed in foam. Now that everything has been unpacked, let's see what is provided with this 3D printer. You get a spare FEP or FEP release film, a cheap putty knife, a plastic putty knife, a paintbrush, a couple pairs of disposable gloves, some resin strainers, a paper mask, a booklet of instructions, a USB drive, and some assorted tools. Some of these items are great additions. The spare film is great to have because you will inevitably need to change the FEP sooner or later. Some of the items, like the cheap putty knife and the paper mask, are completely useless. This printer sports an LCD screen with 2K resolution and a build volume of 119 by 65 by 160 millimeters. The build platform rides on a linear rail and is driven by a Z-screw. The minimum XY resolution on this printer is 0.05 microns. Printer setup is very straightforward. It is the same process that is used across all brands. Attach the build plate, loosen the screws on the build plate, lay a piece of paper on the LCD screen, home the printer, hold down the build plate while you tighten the screws, raise the build plate, install the resin vat, and you are ready to go. Here are some things I noticed while I was setting up the printer. The build plate surface was very sticky. I'm not sure if that is done on purpose or if it is some leftover residue from manufacturing. It has a really nice distressed surface that should help with print adhesion. A little alcohol cleaned the surface of the build plate right up. The case and top surface of the printer is all metal construction. The resin vat is also solid aluminum and it fits perfectly in the provided recess on top of the LCD. The thumb screws stay attached to the resin vat, which is a good way to keep track of them. The only issue with the way the thumb screws are set up is that third party replacement vats will not work with this printer. On top of the thumb screw issues, since a recess is provided for the resin vat to sit in, other brands won't fit in the provided recess. Another nice touch is the fit and finish of the LCD surface. Most printers use tape to mask off the LCD and seal off the internals from accidental resin spills. The Creality printer fits the LCD tightly in the aluminum bezel of the printer base. I'm not sure if it's a leak-proof fit, but it is virtually seamless and gives it a quality look. One thing I've never really liked are these air purification fans located inside the printer. I understand that resin fumes can be noxious and potentially harmful, but there needs to be airflow in order for the purifier to do its job, and with the lid closed, that airflow is not going to happen. This is just my opinion, but I think the air purifiers on resin printers are just a gimmick. The power button and USB placement are ideal. I think Creality really made a great choice by having the USB port on the side and an actual push button power switch on the front. Everything is easy to find and well within reach. The front touch panel is easy to read and intuitive to navigate. I was able to find my way around the interface with relative ease and everything was laid out in a manner that was easy to find. Once I leveled the printer, I searched the provided USB stick for pre-sliced models. I chose the first one on the list and I let it print. I guess I should have paid more attention to the file because it printed this 4 inch bobblehead looking child. It was also a solid print so it took a lot of resin. When I checked out the finished print I noticed that it looked a little overexposed. I didn't know if the loss of detail was from the printer or the file itself 
So I went ahead and printed an Amerilabs town benchmark using the default profile found on Chitabox. The Amerilabs town benchmark also suffered from what I would call a small amount of detail loss. The default profile called for a 9 second exposure time for each layer, so I decided to run some exposure tests to see if I could dial in that time a little better. After running the exposure tests, I determined that the optimal layer exposure was going to be 6 seconds for this AnyCubic standard gray resin. With that information at hand, I ran a new Amerilabs benchmark and pretty much got the same results. Keep in mind that this loss of detail is very subtle and only really noticeable when compared to other benchmarks from other printers. I decided to slice some of my own files, so I went my usual Wood Elf and Mandalorian figures. I sliced them using my 6 second exposure time, and let me tell you, they turned out great. The detail was all there, and the presence of layer lines was imperceptible maybe due to a bit of overexposure or detail loss, but it only improved the print, almost like built-in anti-aliasing. What I think is happening here is the result of the LCD technology being used. It is also the reason that the exposure times are 6 to 9 seconds when mono printers only need 2 second exposure times. Since this is a full color LCD being used, the light has to pass through 3 filters, red, green, and blue, plus a polarizer before it reaches the resin. I believe it is these filters that are causing the small amount of blur on the final print. A mono LCD only has the polarizer filter, so it has to pass through less stuff to get to the resin. Therefore the exposure times are shorter, and the resulting model ends up being slightly sharper, sometimes too sharp, and then you have to use anti-aliasing to smooth the print back out. Like I said earlier, the effect of the LCD filters on the final model is minimal at worst, and has a smoothing effect at best, so I wouldn't fret too much about it. Here are some of the things I like best about this printer. All metal construction. I know in the grand scheme of things, it probably doesn't matter much whether a printer is made of metal or plastic, but I think overall, build quality suffers when plastic is used. This printer has a metal base, metal LCD surface, metal build plate, and a metal resin vat, and the fit and finish of the whole printer is superb. Intuitive user interface. The printer is real easy to navigate and within a few screen taps you are where you want to be. Power button and USB placement. Both the power button and USB port are easy to locate and operate. I'm amazed that more printer manufacturers do not use this placement on their products. Clean vat function. The LD002R has a built-in vat cleaning function which is useful if you have a failed print stuck to the bottom of the resin vat. What I do is place an old piece of support material in the vat, select the clean vat button, input the amount of exposure you'd like, tap the next button, and let it expose. Once complete, pull away the support material and a sheet of exposed resin will also pull away, taking with it any debris and failed print material along with it. Here are some things I didn't like. Useless accessories. Creality isn't the only offender in this category. A good sharp putty knife is essential to be able to successfully remove prints from the build plate, and the one provided with the LD002R is completely useless. Luckily I had a better one provided from another manufacturer so I could remove my prints. I would rather have Creality provide more useful items like more replacement FEP films, or a better putty knife than stuffing the box with things like disposable gloves and paper masks. Like I said, Creality isn't the only company that does this, and this is more of a gripe about the whole industry. I also feel like the air purification gimmick is pointless. I would rather have better accessories bundled with the printer or have the price point be lower instead of having the placebo effect inducing air purification being done by this printer. That name, Creality LD002R, does not roll off the tongue very well. Neither is it an easy name to remember. With all the photons and Marses and Proximas out there, you think Creality would have been more creative with their name choice. It appears they've noticed the trend 
as I see their newest models are called the Halo series, which is a little easier to remember. In conclusion, the Creality LD002R is a well-built, entry-level 3D printer that produces quality prints. The price point makes it a very attractive option for those wanting to try printing for the first time, or for anyone on a budget. The 2K screen produces high-resolution prints that are highly detailed. The LCD technology is dated, yes, but if you are willing to work around the longer print times, the LD002R can be a great printer for a great price. Thanks for watching my review of the Creality LD002R resin 3D printer. I hope it answered some questions that you may have had. If you decide that this printer is right for you, go ahead and click in the link provided in the description box below to gain access to exclusive pricing. While you're at it, go ahead and hit like and subscribe to my channel for more content just like this. If you have this printer or any other resin printer, tell me what you think about this and how it compares to the competition. I enjoy all the discussions that pop up as a result of my videos. Once again, my name is Tom, this is Southpaw Workshop, and I hope to see you guys next time.